Hey, deserving listeners, Love is Blind UK, let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. By the way, I want to make sure that this is out there. I thought I said this in a previous video, but if I didn't, I want to make sure that this is out there, that the reason why I'm even watching this season is because of the following. I w woke up one day and the task for that day was to make some member-only videos. And I was brainstorming in my head what I might watch for the member-only videos. My dog is barking. And it popped in my head that I might watch the first season of Love is Blind again and react to it. I thought that might be interesting to people. I thought it'd be interesting to myself too just kind of go down memory lane. And so I suggested this to my wife and she's a great help when it comes to these kinds of things. And she said, well, you know, you could do that, but you could also watch Love is Blind UK and make those for the member only videos. And I wasn't planning on watching because I'm working currently on my book on grief. And also currently as the day I'm recording this, I'm uh, preparing for the Elon Musk deep dive, which takes a lot of time. I spend 16 hours a day researching and getting my notes together. And of course, recording it takes forever and then editing it takes forever. Uh, I love it, but it's time consuming. So I wasn't planning on watching this season. I, I wish I could. If I had a clone, I would watch all these shows all the time. But I uh, uh, was thinking, oh, okay. And when my wife suggested I watch Love is Blind UK and make that the member only video. So I sat down, started recording. And as I was editing things, I was like, this is going to be too many episodes. There's too many things to say. So I can't release one video a week. So I thought, well, what if we publish three videos a week and we make one of the videos member only and the other would be free for everybody. And I suggested that to my wife and we thought, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And I want to make sure I reiterate that with the U.S. Love is Blind seasons. And I don't know why this is the policy of us right now. It just kind of is organically developing. But I plan when the next Love is Blind season comes out in a few months to you know, record uh, pretty thoroughly reaction videos, publish two a day, seven days a week. I don't want to make the regular reaction videos to Love is Blind US member only. I just want those to be free. And then the, the member only videos would be like the extra videos that maybe an interview or a survey video or something like that, like I did it last season. So I just want to make sure that that's out there. I consider Love is Blind UK, or at least I guess we consider, me and my wife consider Love is Blind UK to be outside of that policy. So that's a long intro. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to make sure everyone understood my process. I, I hope it's okay with you. Uh, I, I'm always very, Stacey and I are very concerned about the experience of y'all and want to make sure that everyone's happy. And uh, I hope that you are. Let's watch. I made a mistake and there's someone I need to talk to and I owe them a huge apology. Okay, interesting. It looks like Nicole is going to talk to Ben. So are we looking at another Zach and Bliss situation? I like this addition to the show's format. I just want him to know that I really care about him and I just want to be with him. Just say the word, I but you would hope that Nicole would think, maybe I am not ready to make that kind of leap or maybe I need to take more time. Maybe, because you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever thought about this, but there might be some people, yeah, I think this makes sense. There might be some people that just lend themselves to this experiment or this show format better than others. I can tell you that I wouldn't be good on a show like this because making an impulsive decision is like this about something as important as this is not something that I would typically do. I wonder if Nicole would say to herself, maybe I'm not the best person for this kind of form. Maybe I just need more time with people because I made that mistake with Sam. How do I know I wouldn't make a mistake with Ben or anyone else? If he says no, it would feel devastating. Yeah, I would feel devastating, but you know, I imagine that Nicole would understand because it's probably been a few days, I'm guessing, 
since Ben was dumped. And in those few days, he has to figure out how to recover. He has to start adjusting. He might get angry at Nicole. Not unduly angry, but, you know, kind of like, oh, I can't believe she did that. You know, the love that I felt must have not been real. Otherwise, she would have been with me. So, you know, if you're in Ben's shoes, you might start turning off those feelings that you had. So by the time this comes around and Nicole says, hey, maybe we should give it a shot, you know, there's a chance that for Ben that flame has been snuffed. Hi. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, and I forget that they've never seen each other. <laughs> so that at the very least, it's interesting for them to just be, oh, that's what you look like. I, I had no idea. I mean, I just can't imagine what that must be like for these folks. It's such a rare, unique opportunity. <laughs> oh, you exist. You're real. You're not a purple dog. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, is he super tall or is she super short? <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> or both? Oh. Do you want to take us? Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things you don't see until the hallway, right? Because they're all sitting. I, su I suppose Milton in season five, you're like, that dude's probably tall, right? <laughs> he just he just looked long. I'm good. Okay, you're a lot. Get your mind out of the gutter you people. <laughs> a lot nicer than I imagined. I thought you were Bob Marley. I'm getting I mean, you got the, I mean, his long hair. I got the long hair. Yeah, I did. I got the long hair. I... Bob Marley, did she think he was black? It... <laughs> it's interesting. They don't usually comment on that. Of course, that would be a question, right? I want to be open with you because I okay. think you deserve that. I think ultimately, um, I mean, I'm sorry. I instantly like i don't want to say regret but like i instantly knew i made a mistake choosing sam we called it off she instantly knew she had made a mistake huh uh, yeah that showed in the hallway when she was like thank you and he's like i think i love you thanks for that that's nice so that would explain that huh she instantly knew maybe Right. So she went into that date with Sam, confronting him about what she had heard from Ben and from Jasmine, I believe. And are you for real? And then he said his lackluster statements that, no, I'm, this is for real. I, you know, I think about you or whatever. And she was like, oh my God. So maybe she hadn't taken a beat to say, okay, but what do I want? <laughs> or maybe she's a pleaser. And because he was being very forward with how much he loved her and wanted to be with her, she, in the moment, she just said yes. You know, think about like, we. I had a similar question about Chelsea with Jimmy and Trevor, right? And the way they edited it, it kind of made it look like Chelsea would have gone with whoever asked her first. I don't think that's true necessarily. Uh, it could just be edited that way or it could just look that way. But, you know, I, we could imagine there's a spectrum that for some people, they're more swayable. There's a good part of that. And there's a bad part of that, right? And the bad part of it could be that you could be swayed by someone that you don't actually really want to be with. I felt that I liked you more and was pouring into you more, but I didn't feel like actually emotionally you were yeah. pouring back. So I then decided to keep my options open and ultimately by choosing someone who was quote unquote emotionally available, I then made a decision that wasn't quite right, you know? Mm. Yeah, that is a frequent metric that they seem to use this emotionally available, the way that Sam came across was that he would tell Nicole, I'm into you, this is for sure, I wanna be with you. You were so right and I didn't wanna hear it. I am so sorry, I'm so you sorry, no. You don't you don't. I mean, I think part of me did think that it would be the two of us. Okay, she apologized. They edited it, but she apologized. And she, she seemed 
genuine. And he said, you don't need to apologize. Just a short thing on that. If I were a little birdie on his shoulder, I would say, don't say that. The reason why people in Ben's position say that is you don't need to beat yourself up. That's okay. You could say that. But it's okay that she's sorry. She's sorry. (laughs) She feels bad. She feels sorrow for having rejected him and having chosen Sam. She's sorry. She hurt his feelings. She greatly hurt Sam or Ben's feelings. She's sorry for that. She should be sorry for that. If she wasn't sorry for that, yikes. So to say, don't be sorry, it, I don't know, it's, it shuts something down. You know, it's really difficult for me coming away from that ending mm. and how like heartbroken I was with everything. And that was so tough, so. Um. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, I'm just so sorry. I just feel like I fucked up in all of It's a nice little moment. He's being honest, that's good. And he's talking about how hard it was and then she starts to cry. He notices very quickly, reaches out. You know, oh, you know, so it's a nice little moment there. I don't know, I just, I don't know. A lot has been swirling around in my head. Well, they have bracelet compatibility for sure. <laughs> it's a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. I was like, as soon as I see you and start talking to you, I'm going to be like, at peace. Oh. But it tells me it's real. Oh, so looks like Ben is up for it. That's what it looks like, right? Yeah. So he, I think, was apologizing a little bit earlier in that little bit for shutting himself off. It sounds like he recognizes he came to a Y in the road and was being overly protective of his ego or himself or his vulnerability. I mean, I'm reading into it. And he realizes now that that wasn't good. He also said, I think that's not who he usually is. So maybe the context of being in competition with Sam just would cause him to protect himself in a way that wasn't conducive to his own needs. I've lost you once. I don't want to lose you again. And I, I came here today with the intention of addressing, you know, your, you wanting reassurance, wanting the commitment. Um, and I couldn't give you that. Huh, yeah. Listen, I mean, uh, given what we know about the two of them, and we're getting more data here, because they're both able to apologize and be pretty authentic and mature. And it makes me wonder if they're going to be a fantastic couple. Of course, of course, you probably know if they're a, or even if they make it to the altar. <laughs> um, huh. Have I made predictions? I don't think I have. Uh, let, let's make a prediction. Uh, I'm going to take a guess and say that they get engaged because I can't imagine Nicole being like, no thanks, or maybe they'll just date. I don't know. But um, so Nicole and Ben, I would, God, it's so hard to predict at this point, right? But uh, so I have no idea. My confidence level is a two out of 10, but I'm going to say yes, yes. With Steven and Sabrina, my confidence is more like a five out of 10, and that's a yes, yes as well. Bobby and Jasmine, I think that they could absolutely be a strong couple. There's no reason to believe they're not, but we haven't really seen much of them. And just, I don't know, there's just something about the two of them that make me think that one of them's going to be a no or they won't make it to the altar. But again, that's more like a confidence level of three out of 10. Freddie and Kat, uh, not much to say there. Hard to know. Uh, I would guess a no at some point from either one of them. Confidence level five out of 10. Ollie and Demi. Ollie and Demi. Uh, I've seen a bit of them at the getaway. They sh- They showed a bit of them already and they seemed to be getting along pretty well but you just never know. So confidence level three out of 10 that one of them is going to be a no. I don't know. Tom and Maria, uh, confidence level four, that they are going to be a yes, yes. What You already know, but don't spoil it because some people watching these videos 
don't even know. And certainly if I'm going to read the comments, then don't spoil it. I need to stand up. Sometimes <laughs> love can pull I think a seed has been sown. I want to help nurture and care for that seed and help it become the most beautiful. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, wow. I mean, we saw Zach and Bliss and they met up for like coffee or something. And then I think their second meetup in person was on the boat. And then he proposed after a while. This is like bing, bang, boom. So it looks like Ben really, really regretted not uh, being more forward and upfront about his feelings. So he's like, if I ever get a chance, I'm just going to really go for it. And he's going for it. There's a cute little moment there where she's like, what? What's happening? Yeah, because in her mind, she's like, uh, he's probably going to hate me. And to go for two minutes and then boom, this happens. That's quite a turnaround. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. They, but they both seem like good, nice people. Hard to tell. Maybe they're horrible people. Don't tell me they're horrible people. I know the girls. And you, oh, don't, yeah. you don't know them. So, yeah. Do you reckon it? So if you were lined up, do you reckon you could pick, pick them out? Well, I could pick out Ollie. Ollie's voice. Yeah, I'm nervous to see Ollie. Why? So it's interesting to see their dynamic, Freddie and Kat. And for some reason, I don't know if we've seen them just chat. The editing they do for the pod footage is pretty purposeful, but this is just them chatting. So they know they're being filmed, so that's one thing. But it's interesting to see the dynamic, uh, at least in this moment, there's a, a style of Kat is exploring and Freddie is supporting and uh, commenting on, which doesn't say anything about anything, but I'm just noticing that. He's, you know, he has a lot of eye contact and and he's responding to things that she's saying in a positive way. He's not like offering his own tangents uh, in this moment. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> just because, well, obviously, you know, I was like... Right, so they're talking about the get-together party. The format is that they have the getaway and then they get a night together and then the next night is everyone gets together and there's always some kind of drama. I will say the cast seems to present with very, uh, on the average, much lower drama. So there's that. I suppose if there's one person that's going to have drama, it would be Kat, right? <laughs> she seems to exhibit. So she's talking right now about that she's nervous to meet Ollie because Kat was dumped by Ollie. So she's nervous to meet him. Okay. That he called off the pods, which is not true. It just hurts because I went in there so genuine. And I was like really conscious that he wasn't upset. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So knowing that he just like twisted my words and made me sound someone that I just didn't like that. I will say I'm glad to have the subtitles because the way, I don't know what her acts, you know, there's a lot of different accents presented here. And hers, maybe it's just the way she talks or something. It's sort of staccato-y. Anyway. It's just different ways of talking, different dialects, different accents. No big deal. But uh, she is saying, what? She's saying that, what is she, let me rewind that. Just because, well, obviously, you know, I was like talking to him at the start. And then like, even though we left it on good terms, obviously, you know, him saying that he called it off the pods, which is not true. He called it off in the pods, which is not true. How does she know that he said he called it off? Maybe Freddie said something. That's the only possible, or that's the main possibility, right? Which, okay. Uh, it's not true that he called it off in the pods. I think essentially she's saying, he, he didn't dump me. That's not true. What is she claiming that 
she dumped him <laughs> because wait uh right ollie had been uh, really trying to figure it out between cat and demi and he headed into a date pod situation with cat and he started off he was like oh this is so hard and cat already knew that because she could hear demi talking about ollie and like oh it kind of sounds like they're connecting so cat goes in and when she heard ollie saying this is my memory and it's been wrong before so but that's my memory and then and then he uh, without having to say it she jumped ahead of it and said that ah, I'll let you off the hook and let's call it off. So maybe she's saying, technically speaking, I introduced the breakup, but you know, the spirit behind the breakup was Ollie dumped her. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it just hurts because I went in there so genuine and I was like really conscious that he was not upset. Do you know what I mean? I would I went in there genuine, it hurts, and I was conscious that he what? Called it off. The pods, which is not true. It just hurts because I went in there so genuine and I was like really conscious that. He I went in there so genuine, it hurts. I was like really conscious that he wasn't upset. I was really conscious that he wasn't upset. Is she saying I dumped him and he didn't seem upset about that? Now, maybe for Kat, she had been considering breaking up with Ollie and when Ollie presented the dumping, she was like, well, I was going to break up with him probably, so I'll just speed ahead. And, you know, we rewrite history based on how we feel about things. But uh, I don't know what she's saying there. Do you know what she's saying there? I'm sad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So knowing that he just, like, twisted my words and made me sound someone that I just didn't like that. I think and I'm a very... Twisted my words and maybe sound like someone... Dot, dot, she she doesn't finish that sentence. Someone what? Twisted my words to be like someone who gets dumped? I don't, I don't understand. My words, maybe she sound someone that I just didn't like that. I think and I'm a very like upfront, I'll confront someone. I just don't know about this. His accent is a little harder <laughs> to understand too. But anyway, uh, so, uh, and of course, they might have a hard time understanding my accent, but she says, I'm up front, I will confront someone. Okay, why? What would be the point in talking about it at all? What does it matter? And then <laughs> Freddie says, I just don't think it matters. And then he says, yeah, but for me it, it does. And okay, you know, it, it does. So, yeah, right. So what do you say in a situation like that if, if you're Freddie? This is what we use as a jumping off point. Certainly, I agree with Freddie, based on my limited understanding. But the first foray with someone, you probably don't want to say something like that. You you want to say, yeah, it sounds like you feel like he lied about you. You know, more validating, more reflecting. People are more open to influence if you establish that you understand someone. <sighs> I, I'm going to take a guess and say that 95 plus percent of the time, people don't validate when it's a simple matter of just hearing someone talk about something at work or at school or something. We just have, at least anecdotally, and certainly what I see on reality TV, we just have the hardest time understanding the fundamentals of emotions and communication and empathy. It goes a long way, not only in marriages or relationships or work relationships, but also in matters of nations and war and interracial conflicts. To start with validation could solve so many problems. Yeah, but for me it does. Yeah, but for me it does. I get that. But like, I just think that's the pride thing. I think at the end of the day, you've been true to yourself. And Yeah, so he says, uh, it's just a pride thing. There's... There's no practical reason to confront Ollie on this. At the end of the day, you've been true to yourself, and it, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't impact your life. You're never, in all likelihood, you, you're rarely going to see Ollie. You know, what is it? He, he, he believes he's, he's walking around saying those things, and the TV show will show the footage that will say the truth, right? <laughs> so he, he's saying that, yeah. 
Yeah, maybe what I would say if I was trying to also convince her, I might say, well, what are the possible outcomes of confronting him? Because you could confront him and he could say, oh, my God, you're right. I'm so sorry. I'm a terrible person. Or he could say something else. He could get defensive. It could start a fight. He could double down. It could cause a rift. It could cause a rift with Demi. You know, there's there's consequences here. Is it worth it? Because, you know, if it's worth it, then okay. But maybe it's not worth it. But, you know, did he lie? I, does he, does all he deserve to, uh, I don't know. So, you know what I mean? If I was like Maloli up for like a chat, like I, I wouldn't do it to cause drama. It's just literally just out of respect to be like, hey, like it was a bit shit what he did. <laughs> oh, oh, in, in one sentence, nothing sums up reality television like that sentence Let, let's really let's really highlight and celebrate this sentence you've been true to yourself and it doesn't matter you know what i mean if i was like pull ollie up for like a chat if i was like gonna pull ollie up for like a chat okay so let's write that <laughs> i want to write this down actually i just love this this sentence it's so great like pull ollie up if i was to like pull Ollie up for like a chat, dot, dot, dot. Uh, like I, I wouldn't do it to cause- Like I wouldn't do it to cause drama. Drama, it's just literally just out of respect to be- I'm not, I don't want to cause drama. I just want to say that you did a really shitty thing. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, although you know, I I, I get it. It, it, it. Did she lie? I, I that's I, I have the memory pretty well in my head that that is the way I describe it. Really, like hey, like it was a bit shit what he did. If you feel that's what you need to do to get like closure or to make yourself feel better about the situation, then you do it. Interesting. So Freddie is being supportive, which is great, and he doesn't look very happy about that <laughs> and then he says yeah well if you feel like you need to do that for closure then you do it yeah and maybe maybe they're a good couple because that interaction you know like who knows just based on this little bit maybe she benefits from having a level-headed person who's not very impulsive or confrontational to ground her but if she really needs to do something because that's how she rolls, then he ultimately will support and look at it in a positive light. Just like, okay, well, because he, he introduced that word closure, which might be effective, might help to say, because she's not saying that. So he might be thinking, at the very least, he might be interpreting it that way, but he might also be suggesting, then that'll be that, <laughs> you know, like, Go ahead and say that, and then closure, meaning it's over, right? Okay. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, I'll stand by you. Whatever you want to do, I'll stand by you. Yeah. Well, I mean, if the primary goal is to bond with your fiance, then I would say that Freddie nailed it. But if the secondary goal of uh, well, what would well? I guess a part of that goal would be: Are we good together? Is this someone I really want to be with? Because you wouldn't see how someone operates in that context. You don't. You only have the pods as a basis for understanding someone. Now you get to see. Now Freddie gets to see how Cat acts in the social world. But on the surface, it sounds like Freddie's fine and flexible. Fine, flexible Freddie. <laughs> so fine. All right, well, let's adjourn there. I want to give a shout out to those YouTube members who have been around for a, a long time. The longest term YouTube members starts with good old Ginger, Ginger Davis. And we also have Rosie and good old Fema, good old Fema, and Studerk, Allison, Stella Annie, good old Stella Annie, Brittany Lopez, MCK Sandal, Alehu, good old Alehu, Tessa, SRM808, Emily, good old uh, Emily, Cami, Maria, uh, Luciana, Mercury, 
Uh, Maria, I think I've communicated with you in the comment section. So thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member and being a long-term YouTube member. It's very cool of you. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.